This PSA was brought to you by the Peter G Show. You may have second thoughts after this show. But don't drink the Foster. <laughs> well, we're really talented. We should get Oscars. <laughs> Just pick out a car for Christ's sake. No, I'm one. Hi, my name is Peter. Yeah, I want. I want. Here's good. Here's good. Ah, yeah, yeah. Adam Perry. I need to get back in the bottle. <laughs> Louie from Pennsylvania, you're on. He likes it. It's show time. Yeah, it's showtime. It's showtime. Wednesday. Hey, everybody. I hope you're feeling good. It's October. Fall. Fall colors. <laughs> oh, man, the year is just blowing by. It's kind of like a love-hate. It's like you can't wait to get it over with because it's been so, so we, so it's just been a strange year, full of uh, keeping you on the edge of your seat, running you around in circles, banging your head against the wall, and then thanking God for still being able to be here and to be here. But it's October, and. Uh, we're all trying to make the best of it, but I'm here to get you through it. I hope everybody's doing well. My name is Peter G. You're watching Life with Peter G, The Peter G Show, every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, and 9 p.m. on the East Coast, which I don't know if we'll get to that, but you know what's going on on the East Coast right now, and if you don't, pay attention. Feel sorry for everybody. Everybody's going through stuff. God willing, we're here. Lots to do tonight. I um, I hope that you have your dialing fingers warmed up. I really hope you do. I'd like to hear, get a few calls from you guys. Uh, number one, I, I, I'm really starting to take notice of like, you know, where you're watching from. Even the comments, you know, you can comment on here. If you're watching from YouTube, if you're watching from the official Peter G Show page, or you're watching from the official LinkedIn page too, you can comment and I can see the comments. If you're watching from the other Facebook pages and things like that, I can't see them till later, but, uh, you know, I'd like to know where you're watching from. That's always interesting because I'm going to talk about that in a couple of minutes too. But, uh, I decided I need to take some phone calls. I really, cause I get the emails and I get the comments all week long, gazillions of them, but I'd like to hear from you personally. Talk to me personally. I'm hoping that I don't need a whole lot of calls, just a few people with something worthy of saying that they're either something that's, you know, under getting under their skin like me. Or, or something that they're really concerned about or something they want to get off their chest or whatever you want to talk, whatever you want to talk about, okay? I'm open. I'm in. Because be, because this show really is about you. I was thinking about that earlier today. This The basis of this show, everything is, is revolves around 99.999% of you, the people. Everything that, that goes into this of what we're going to do. Now, every week doesn't, you know pinpoint right on you exactly but in general it's about life and people living all the above so you know i wish I, I would love you know when we first started this show i really started it with doing nothing but phone calls no guests no stories just sitting here waiting to hear from you wanting to hear from you talk about things that are important to you and I like that a lot. I do. I like interacting with people. I love act interacting with people. But I don't know. Then things kind of changed. We kind of shifted gears, and then we kind of went back to it again. And well, maybe a, you know, for a little bit, I want to go back a little bit more. So we might take some phone calls tonight. So again, get your dialing finger ready. The number will be going up in a little bit, uh, and and we'll we'll uh, hopefully get a few decent phone calls. And doesn't take much, like I said. Um, 
the things I'm going to talk about tonight in between phone calls uh, in case things are slow or just to get your motor running. You know, I always lead by example, but I will talk about this past hurricane that went up from Florida and then went up into the Carolinas and Tennessees and Georgias and all that because it was heartbreaking. We are going to talk about that right off the bat before I even take phone calls because I need to address that issue about some things that are going on. It's important. It's just it's just horrendous what went over there. And I'm not sure if everybody's fully aware, but if you're not, you're going to be. And uh, if you are, just you know, hang in there. So maybe there's something that you didn't know that need to know. Either way, it's a bad situation. We're going to talk about, of course, last night's vice presidential debate a little bit. Just a little bit. And, and again, you can call in and talk about whatever you want. I'll stop what I'm doing to listen to you. But this is what I'm going to have in between calls, things like that. Just uh, because there's so much news going on and things going on during the week. Uh, that's why I've been doing it like we're doing it. But uh, And uh, what else are we going to talk about? I don't know. Plenty of stuff to talk about. But first... I'm going to re-mention a few things. I'm still being censored. YouTube took they took down another show from when did they take it down from? Uh, July nineteenth, twenty twenty. They took down another show from July nineteenth, twenty twenty. Show number sixteen. It was a I had V from the Red Pill Hardcore show. He's been on many times, but I don't know what we were talking about. We were talking about whatever was current right then. I guess it was probably the. Uh, COVID again. This is like the third show they've taken down in a month but in that time period. The censorship is incredibly uh, horrendous on what they're doing here. They don't want that. And, and again, it's so far in the past. It's like, who cares? Well, obviously, they're still concerned to cover up things because they are still going through, and my little old show, meticulously, surgically taking out certain shows that their AI doesn't agree with. Say the wrong word, you're out. I don't care. Help me fight the fight. Please keep subscribing to the PeterGShow.com. Just hit subscribe. It's free. Or follow on the official Facebook Peter G Show page, uh, LinkedIn, uh, just all of the above, all of not just one. If you watch other and you're on other page, just do it so we can build you know, everything stronger because I want to stay relevant on YouTube. I do. There's plenty of people on there that need to hear certain things that are just good people that just don't. You know, they don't pay attention enough. And uh, please help me out on that. But uh, also, you know, I got that show taken down. Num number two, number one enemy, TikTok. Again, they took down, how many shows they take down? They took down two videos this week of mine. They just take them down. You know, it violates their uh, guidelines. And then you go to appeal it. And then it's like, yeah, you, ain't, we're, you can't even forget it. You appealed, but we're keeping it. We're taking it down. It makes no sense. Again, this is what's happening. Freedom of speech is really getting... You should be able to decide whether you want to listen to me or what I have to say or what I bring to the table or not. You, the people, should be able to decide. Not them, but they're so scared. And it's talk like this that gets me in trouble for reminding you of your freedom because you're slowly getting it taken away and you're not feeling it until it's too late. One minute you can't do this and you go, okay, that's not so bad. The next minute you can't do that. It's like... Oh, damn. All right, whatever. And then before you know it, you don't have nothing left. You don't have anything left. So please, subscribe, follow, share, share, share. Keep spreading the word. I need more people You uh, because they throttle me back. They're not letting me be seen. And I hate being a broken record about this, but I need to be a broken record about this. It's so important. It's so important. All right? Because... I can't say it enough on what they're actually doing. And it, you can't tell that they're doing it because they're not blatantly going to say, yeah, we're doing it, but they're doing it. They're throttling me back. It's they, they have their algorithms and ways to just not let my videos and my shows go through, except for certain times and certain people. And I need more. And I know I'm, I, I know I'm doing better than what they make you think I'm doing. And that's what's the sad part, because the numbers don't lie. And it's like the numbers aren't making sense. That's why I know they're not lying. Either way, speaking of that, let's talk about popularity real quick since I'm struggling to, uh, to, to, to stay relevant. When I started this show, basically, I wanted to appeal naturally to the United States. 
English speaking people, English understanding people, because I speak in English. I wanted to bring this show to the masses, basically the United States and whoever else in the entire world that wants to partake. You're more than welcome. And I am truly grateful. I am. And I don't know what the hell happened the other night, but I got the bug. And, and I, I went looking and I don't, I don't look at statistics. It bores the hell out of me. And to me, I need to focus on doing and not worrying about what other people are thinking. And I don't normally, but I do put my toe in the water. You know, I'll leave the statistics and all the math and everything to other people. Let them deal with it. But I focus on this, you right here. And I saw, I just happened to like, press the right button and fall into the right area to where, okay, naturally, thank God, knock on wood, that uh, my most heavily populated fan base is in the U.S., right? Should make sense. I mean, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're doing a Tim Waltz. Jazz hands. Except for last night. Last night, it was can't do that face. That was last night's face. <clears throat> so we're most popular in the U.S. But here's what really freaked me out. Because I didn't see this coming. And I've done, I've looked before and it wasn't even close. But all of a sudden, within the past month, guess what number two most relevant audience I have? What continent? What country? Take a guess. I'd say put it in the comments, but nobody's commenting. Usually people start commenting early. Feel free to comment. I'll look and see. I don't see nothing. Nope, it's blank Ola. Oh, well. Number two, I'm audience, country, and this came out of nowhere because I've seen it before and it was ne nearly nothing. But all of a sudden, I don't know whether they were holding it back or, or it just came through. Number two audience for the Peter G show right now is China. I mean, almost as big as the United States, which I don't know where that came from, but I went back and I checked and I double checked and China. So I appreciate it for the Chinese people that they want to watch the Peter G show. Maybe they'll get some facts out of the whole deal if they're not being censored. But China, of all places, not Europe. South America, I was getting different little countries and this and that, you know, and Europe as well. I still do. But China, and China's a big place. It was not far on the heels of the United States audience population for the Peter G Show, which just blew me out of the water. But then I look, who's number three? And guess who number three is? They're our friends down south. Mexico. So I got Mexico, China, and the United States. I'm going, what a correlation. It's kind of like our border issue. So I don't know who's watching. I thank you. Maybe you want, you know, you, you want to know what's really going on before you walk over the borderline or something. I don't know. But thank you. But I'm just kind of it 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 changed drastically within the last month. Something's going on. But I'll be damned if you guys are going to let China over throw the number one slot for audience viewing in the United States. It's like, come on. And the only way that that is calculated is, is by views, sharing, following, subscribing, etc. All the above. So please... I know I'm taking a few minutes on this, but this is the most important thing because there's no sense in wasting air time if it's going nowhere. Now, I do cherish the, the dedicated ones, and that's why I'm saying comment to me tonight. Where are you watching from? I want to know where you're watching from. This is I'm going to start being a little bit more. They said you really know, need to know, know your audience. I go, I think I know my audience. I just don't know where they're from. I know that I piss off some of my audience, but, you know, sometimes it's it's like, a, what do you call that? Tough love. It is. I don't not like you. Even when you're telling me I'm full of shit or you're saying I'm a friggin' idiot. I appreciate you watching. 
because I know that we'll do more good things than we will that we don't agree in. And here we go. But that that's what really... Uh... Wow. All right. Springfield, Missouri. Thank you. That's it. I'm going to even put you up there for the first, the first one. Right there. Tawana's looking, viewing from Springfield, Missouri. God bless you over there. Springfield, Missouri. Or is Springfield Live? All of you. Midwest, it's tough. There's a lot of things going on in the Midwest, population wise, migrant wise, that, you know, we're. They, they're keeping a lot away from the coast because they're getting flooded in anyway. But now they're dropping them off, you know, Nebraska's, Montana's. No, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. But again, share, 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 and I hope you're subscribed. But there you go, Tawana. I love you. Up next, here we go. Huh? Some tyrant from Pensacola in the house. Loney, Loney, Purina Dean. Is that how you say it? Thanks, Lonnie. You know I love you. He's in the house. Lonnie's in the house a lot because he pays attention. He knows good stuff when he sees it. My ninja. All right. Either way, I love you guys. Let's go. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Oh, and lastly, uh, uh, I am going to, in, in a coming up in just a couple of minutes, like I said, we're going to talk about the uh, hurricane things that happened up in the the. the not just the Gulf Coast, because that they kind of took a beating, but not nearly like the states on the in the inner coasts, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia. Tragic, tragic stuff. And I'm going to touch on that before I open up the phone lines. But then again, like I said, get your dialing finger ready. I want to hear from people that don't normally come in. I want to know what's what's happening with you and what you're what all entailed in your lives. Or unless you got a gripe with me or you want to talk about something that we're currently talking about, I'm all in. But that's what I want to do. And damn it, we're going to do it. But uh, right now, I want to take a minute to go hear from my good friends over at Clean Star Products with their money-saving fuel additive DX1 driver. I'll be right back. Hello, I'm Tyrone Thompson of CleanStarProducts.com. This is DX1 Driver in the news, and here's what our friends have to say. So I'm here to uh, recap on a DX1 I've, I've used. I put it in, in oil and I put it in the gas while I'm using it just for about three tanks. Cleaned everything out. I got every ounce of power back in my truck. When Jared's truck was new, it had a lot of power. Then over time, it began to slow down. He got it all back with our DX1 driver program. Something you gotta see for yourself. It's a great product, it's affordable, and it blows all the other additives and esters out of the water. DX1 driver is the finest oil in the world from a California environmental company. It goes into the fuel system and the oil. It's the only green grade product qualified for the carbon credits program, giving you better fuel mileage, lower emissions, and increased horsepower. So join the fuel savings revolution today. Go to cleanstarproducts.com slash shop. That's right, folks. Clean Star Products. I said it before and I'll say it again. Two words. It works. I use it myself. I wouldn't say it if it didn't, because then you can say, oh, that Peter, he's full of crap, which I get people that say that enough anyway. But when it comes to Clean Star products and the money-saving fuel additive of the DX1 driver, the stuff really works. It's just like anything else. Don't expect to put one little bottle in and go, oh, I don't, you know, and it's gonna, it doesn't take off like a rocket. It takes a little time, just like medications for your body. Think of your car as your, as a, as your body. You know, good food in your body makes you a better, right? Put one of those little bo bottles in the clean oil change. Where's my little bottles? There we go. Put one of these in a clean oil change, last the whole oil change. And every time you fill up your tank, you put one of these in your fuel tank with a full tank of gas. You'll start noticing the difference when between three and four tanks of gas. All of a sudden, you're going to notice, like, hey, I'm, my car's running. I can just feel it. It's, it's got that little extra pep in its step, and I'm getting better gas mileage. I know it because I didn't go to the gas station normally on a Tuesday. For every, every day of driving back and forth to work, I didn't have to go till Thursday works but don't believe me talk to tyrone thompson himself he's more than happy to answer your questions and he wants to so go to www.cleanstarproducts there's a phone number on the website 
I'm asking you to dial that number and speak to him personally. He'll answer all your questions. And the reason I'm asking you to dial that number, because when you do, should you talk to Tyrone, which I know you will, or Ty, you'll be friends after that and just call him, hey, Ty, tell him that you saw it on the Peter G Show. Should you decide to purchase, he's going to send you five bottles for the price of four, okay? A deal's a deal. Five bottles for the price of four. I'm telling you, that should like give you a, a, a good gauge of like, to me, I would do double that and then judge because it's really, you know, it, it's a good investment. It is not going it, to, all it's going to do is make your car, I say feel better, but it will. You just won't know, it, but it's going to run better. More lubricis, lubricity. It's going it to just, just good food, good car, just like your body. Again, go to www.cleanstarproducts. There's a phone number there. Talk to them. They'll answer all your questions. And then should you decide to order, again, it's very important you mentioned that you saw it on the Peter G Show. Let them know that we're doing something. And he will get you five bottles for the price of four. I promise. It's good stuff. I wouldn't say it if I didn't you know, experience it myself. There's just no way. I'm not a good liar. And that word seems to be a lot now. He's a liar. He lies. A lot of that going around. But it's not coming from here. We may make a few mistakes here and there, but... Not going to come out purposely, that's for sure. All right. Next. Here we go. Here we go. Salute. Woo. Smooth. Lately, I've been delving into all this stuff, and it really bothers me a lot. I don't know what's going on. I mean, you know, I, I think ever since my child was born... I just, it pussified me in a, in a lot of emotional kind of ways. It opens up doors of, you know, it takes out a lot of the hardening. I mean, I'm not saying that I was a hard person, but I don't, I don't know. It's just, I've become more sensitive to human things. And this hurricane, okay, we get hurricanes, you know, down in the, in the Gulf and things like that. You get hurricanes and, you know, but nobody wants to hear tragedy. But the real tragedy, it's like you're thinking, okay, hurricanes are gulf things, and then you get torrential rains that go up. But, but the, you know, you get some, you get rains and you get some flooding. But these poor people, it wiped out towns. I get, I hope you people are following, all right? Because it wiped out towns and bridges and roads, and not just in one little area, states, states, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. I'm assuming some of Kentucky too. A little bit of Arkansas, everybody got, there's over 200 people that are confirmed dead. Who knows how many people are missing? And there's so many people they can't even get to. But here's what I want to do. I want to play a little video. I'm going to open up the phone lines in a minute too. I just want to set the set the pace for getting you primed up and saying, yeah, I want to call. But I want you to know a little bit about this hurricane because this is tragic. This I, I, I my, my heart goes out. I, I can't even imagine. It's like what they're what is going on over there, and the help is well. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, check. Let me make sure I got this all right. Yeah, I do. Okay, here. Check check this out. This is a little uh, just a little overview of the whole deal. I really don't think y'all understand how bad it is in the southeast right now. We have towns that don't exist anymore. Chimney Rock is is gone. The city of Asheville is cut off from the world. This this is not an exaggeration. All the bridges leading into the city have been washed away. They have no food, no power, no water, no internet, no cell service. They don't even have radio. It's a com it's a complete like dead zone. Uh, no one knows what's going on in there. I don't think I'm being dramatic when I say that this is a Hurricane Katrina level event. Uh, there was a woman in my town who called for an ambulance and the ambulance got stranded. And they were stranded for like 24 hours and to my knowledge the patient didn't make it. Pe people are dying. Uh, they're still dying. I've been running the generator for the last three days and we're starting to run out of gas and this is on highway 123 heading from Aisley to uh to Greenville and this was a one mile long line to get gas because they were the only people we knew around that had gas left I got all the way to the end and they were out they had no gas we checked every gas station in Pickens and Aisley and in Liberty nothing and I don't know what I'm gonna do when I run out of gas I tell you that much try to steal some from my car maybe to keep my food cold but even then I don't know this is the I-40 bridge, you know, from Tennessee to North Carolina. It's 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 gone. It don't exist no more either. Um, we have people dying out here. Man, we we need help. We need help. 
they do need help. Because if you watch on TV, they may say, yeah, they got people, they're sending people in. But from what I'm getting, gathering, it's a mess. And for some reason, they may be mobilizing and things like that. But you have to understand that when you get up in those areas, they're very mountainous and rural. And all that rain and water fell on all those mountains and it goes down. And it is screwing up and it wiped out and washed out play sizes of you know like they might have ravines and things like that and it washed out 10 times that size taking cars houses but you saw the video right there that was just one quick little example of one area this is happening in multiple areas and now i'm getting notes that 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 they're just not you know doing what they need to do fast enough and this is again i put it on our administration they have all the power but you know to to give all our money to illegals and and make sure that they get in and they get bust around and go in five star hotels and now our own people are in trouble if not you know dying or dead and they're 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 i don't know they're backtracking they're drips and drabs that should have been n- number one priority everything else stops here don't believe me listen to this guy because uh, he's boots on the ground, normal citizen, human being to help because they're not doing enough. Check this out. A matter of life and death for the people of North mm-hmm. Carolina. Where are you at? Sorry. Uh... My name is Jonathan Howard. I'm a member of the Florida State Guard Special Missions Unit. And I'm also up here with Aerial Recovery, a nonprofit. I came up here on Sunday with aerial recovery before we even got activated. We flew up here and then we got activated, which is great. I have my team up here working as well. Here's the problem. I'm going to tell you everything that's happening from the ground, what I'm actually seeing, because what they're telling you is complete bullshit on the news and these politicians don't have a fucking clue and they're lying. And I'll say this now, I'll say it at the end of the video. The only thing I need from this video is helicopters. If I have helicopters, I can save lives. Without helicopters, I can't reach these people. It doesn't matter how many chainsaws and trucks I got, I can't get to them. They're 10 miles in, 20 miles, 40 miles in the mountains. There's no way to get with them or even communicate with them. I am literally flying around in a civilian helicopter looking for SOS messages carved in the mud or painted on the ground and we're dropping down and saving them. What got me fired up about this was yesterday, me and my team did the rescue of that 11 day year old baby. And all these government officials and social media, they're showing that video, that pictures and video of that rescue and claiming that like they have some like government helped with that. And I mean, it, even USA, I think it was USA Today wrote an article about it saying it was a Florida National Guard that went and got it, like with a helicopter. No, it was me, my buddy, Charlie, and a civilian named Zeb with his own personal helicopter out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Like without that civilian, that baby would be dead. And the old lady we went and rescued after that, she'd be dead too, because she had one day left of oxygen. There, no one was going to go get them. I will tell you, when we go up in the air, I probably see 40 civilian helicopters, and I might see two Blackhawks, National Guard, military, whatever they are. That's it. No one's out there doing rescues. I have my entire team up here from Florida right now and they have no ability to go rescue these people other than what they can drive to. And the people that are in dire need, they're out in the mountains. They are completely cut off. Now I will say, I spoke to my Congresswoman down in Florida and she's a badass and she made a bunch of phone calls and now we got two contracted 60s coming up here tomorrow, which is great. I love that, but like, I still don't understand why we don't have more helicopters. Like we'll get a lot of work done with that, but. There's no, uh, no, there's no military. There's no, no one's doing nothing. I just, it, it blows my mind. And they're not even allowing people to see what's really going on. One of our friends yesterday, they were actually escorting CNN down a late lure and they wouldn't even let CNN, the sheriff department would not let them go videotape the bad areas of how destructive it is. I don't know why they don't want to show you all that, but I mean, it is bad. I should also say when I flew here on Sunday, they actually stopped us from going in the sheriff department and it was because of a bunch of politics that they were claiming was a speaker of the house of North Carolina that was preventing us from even going in and trying to kick us out. 
which I have clarified today with North Carolina politicians that reached out to me, good on them. And they were like, that's complete bullshit. Speaker of the House has nothing. He wants you guys there. But this is the kind of political BS that is happening here right now. Like everyone's trying to be in charge without taking any type of action. Nobody wants to coordinate with anybody. Everybody wants to pretend like they're being the hero while these people are literally fucking dying in the mountains. And these people, like I'm saying, these people are limited medication. They're running out of oxygen and there's no one going to get them. The most effective way I have found to go find these people is by getting in a helicopter and flying down the rivers and roads and looking for SOS messages or people waving us down. And then we drop down and get them. We have all these people here. We have law enforcement, we have state guard, national guard. They have no way to go get these people. Yesterday when I was at the Asheville airport refueling, which by the way, the civilian is paying all this out of his own pocket. He's not even looking for a reimbursement. I think we did four refuelings yesterday. And that was like just in half a day's work. We're in Asheville and I saw two Air Force helicopter 60s. And I knew they were PJs just looking at them. And I went up to him like, hey guys, like what are y'all doing? And like, this is what you need to be doing. This, 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 this is how I'm finding people. And they're like, we can't go. We're waiting on title 10 orders. And I'm like, what? They just, they can't get any authority. There's military helicopters all over here sitting on the ground and they can't do nothing. Even my JSOC boys in Fayetteville, they can't get orders to come out here. It is just the most disgusting thing and they're killing these people. And I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know what kind of conspiracy. I've heard so many things, whatever you wanna come up with, but they are literally allowing these people to fucking die in the mountains right now because we can't get helicopters. They got money for everything else in the fucking world right now, but if they could just get us helicopters, we could fly out there and rescue these people. So I hope this video goes viral. I hope these politicians get fired. I hope people get pissed off. They'll probably kick me out of the state of North Carolina for doing this, but you know what? I don't care because if I can save one more life for it, it's fucking worth it to me. It's disgraceful. It's sad and disgraceful. This guy's not lying. You know, if the orange man was in office, there'd be, he's already been there doing stuff and he's not even, you know, obligated, has, doesn't have to be there. They probably don't want him there. The administration doesn't want him there because he's making everybody look bad. But you know, he doesn't have the authorization to tell the military and the you know National Guard and all that to call them in. But you know he'd do it in a heartbeat. That's all I can say. He would do it in a friggin' heartbeat. And they are dicking around and people are dying. I mean, we're not talking about just one town. We're talking about hundreds of miles in, di in four different states. Roads are washed out. They can't get to certain places. Roads, bridges, they're just done. Houses are gone. It's just mud and debris. God knows when they siphon through that, people will not even be found. Ever. And we have the resources, and they're not allowed to go. Red tape. I don't get it. I don't get it. And he was right. We have money for everything else. Now, this is, I think, one of the most insulting things. I'm going to play one more, and then I'm going to open up the phone lines. But uh, this girl pretty much nails it on the head. Here you go. I'm going to be asking the American people to continue to help fund the needs of these people. It's not going to be one hit and it's over. It's going to take a hell of a long time. It's going to cost a hell of a lot of money. But this is the United States of America. And we've got to do it. So Biden is asking the American people to fund their own relief when they're already suffering. But he can send billions of dollars to other countries who are in need. How about we put our own first? Also, Biden, where are you? Trump was just in Valdosta, Georgia. Also, Ms. Harris, why are you living it up in Vegas right now? Our country is literally underwater. Biden pretty much just said F you to the American people. Mm, gotta love this administration. Gotta love this administration. <sighs> Sorry, distracted. Lots of things going on. But it's the truth. He's like, we have to donate. We need to donate. Because what he really means is we're too busy giving all our money to 
every other place that's besides our own. We're too damn busy putting illegal migrants in hotels, giving them free cell phones, giving them monthly grocery, free groceries on, on, on uh, ETB or whatever they're called, cards. They're too busy doing that. And we can't take care of our own. That's what he really means. That's, it's beyond pathetic. And I was more than happy to share that man's video and spread the word. Their hands are tied. I'm sure a little pressure, nothing like lighting a fire under people's asses to get things going. But, you know, these people, I mean, every hour that goes by, they're out in the woods, the wilderness, uh, you know, in the mountains, every night, day, no food, shelter, medicines for some people, water, clean water. You try it. It's not pretty good. Not very good. All right, here's what I'm going to do because I, I want I want to see if we can uh, just get a call or two. I'm I'm just in one of those moods. I want to I really want to hear from you guys. But uh, if you have something to say, I want you to call me now live eight one eight two five nine seven nine eight three eight one eight two five nine seven nine eight three and uh, and again, if you're listening to the show, turn down your device, computer, TV. So it doesn't feed back, but I don't, you know, I just want to know, you, you don't even have to talk about this. I just wanted to bring awareness to that situation. You can call in and talk to me about anything you want to talk about. I got plenty of things I'll do through the show if you don't call, but I really want to give you the opportunity to voice yourself. If you have something worth saying, please, uh, let me just go here while we're doing this. I want to make sure that we are, uh, that we're good. Yeah, I think we are. I think we are. But either way, that's my 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 point being is that it's just beyond uh I don't like what's going on in our world. It, it it's there's there's certain priorities that are going on and they're not in the you the American citizens favor. Yeah. It uh it's it's the truth. And I got uh well Ben, I I agree with you. Uh, pieces of shit. Yeah. Well, Again, because it doesn't affect them, Ben. That's the problem. They don't care. We're just worker ants to, to a lot to the higher echelon. And that's why I, I I open my mouth. You know, I've been getting criticized a lot lately. I have. Uh this week alone, the 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 difference in opinions from people. Peter, you know, I've been watching you for a long time. You just keep doing what you're doing. Thank God for you. And you just keep going. And, you know, to Peter, get out of politics. It's like, I'm not really in politics. I'm just commenting about politics. I don't like politics at all. I've said it many times. I think politicians, I think that whole type of phrasing and and their their titling needs to be wiped out. Start afresh except for giving our sovereignty over to the WEF and the WHO and all those people. That's what they really want, this whole new world order thing. That ain't going to happen. 818-259-7983. Come on. I know everybody sits there and they watch and they go, I'm going to wait for somebody else to call. I want to hear what somebody else has to say. So you're all sitting there waiting for somebody to say something. Meanwhile, I'll just keep saying something. It sucks. They want us down on our knees because they want to start controlling things even more. And a lot of people just don't get it. They just don't get it. They don't get it. And I understand that because I wasn't paying attention to this stuff a decade ago. But as I said last week, I believe, you know, as you get older, you change, hopefully for the better. Not that you were bad or anything like that, but you evolve. I know I've changed. I don't know if it's for the better or not, but I know I've changed because I don't think I was ever that bad or anything. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying people are bad or there are bad people, but most bad people will stay bad. I've just look, I've just refocused on things. I look at certain things a different way now. You know, the importance of this or that. If you have children, you want your children to grow up and be decent human beings. And this is a tough world. How are they going to make it? 
I mean, we got some jackasses growing coming up that don't know a damn thing that, you know, gays for Palestine. They don't even friggin' have a clue that the 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 the, the radical uh you know terrorists they they hate gays. They'll they'll kill you in a second, but they'll use you first. But the stupidity is is off the charts. Or the ignorance. They just don't know. So I'm bringing it to your attention. Good or bad. Some people will say right on Peter. Some people say, you know, I can't watch Peter no more. I don't know what's happened to him. You know, he's, I just, but that's because you disagree. And then I have people that don't know the difference between which way to go or, and they're willing to at least listen. And somebody just wrote another comment and it's like, why should I believe you, Peter? And I can't say this enough. I'm not asking you to believe me or telling you to believe me. I'm pointing a few things out in hopes that you'll question what I'm saying based on the opposite of what you believe in and maybe dig a little deeper and reaffirm the truth. Simple, but you won't take the time. It's easier just to make up your mind and stick with it based on what the TV is telling you. I'd like to say I'm no different than the TV, but I am different than the TV because nobody's got their thumb on my neck telling me what to say and what not to say for a price. Because believe me, I've said it many times. We all need to make a living. And some people make better livings than, than others. But I draw a line. I cannot do something I don't believe in. Now, if I was totally in belief with the, the libtards and, and uh, in communism and things like that and uh, the current administration and, and regime, you know, if I totally was brainwashed like that, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd do that. But I all of a sudden see differently now. I realized the, the man behind the curtain. I found out everything they're showing you is not real, which is a tough one to buy into because you always question, well, why, what do you mean it's not real? Why would they lie to us? Because they want to change the way the world operates and they want to control it from one, a few thousand, you know, elite assholes want to tell us what to do, what to eat, when we can and cannot do something, where we can and cannot go what we can and cannot drive. And I'm not having it. So I'll keep saying this in hopes that you'll understand. In hopes that you'll understand that there's a lot of information out there and they're trying to keep it from you because they want you to believe in what they're telling you. So it doesn't hurt. They're trying to cancel. I, I heard it. Uh, who was it? Uh, the, 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 he's, he's with the, uh, the WEF. Um, he drives, oh my God, he, he ran for president. <sighs> he ran for president. John, uh, he catches hell because he drives around on jets all over the world and he's gotten, he's become a real radical when it comes to, uh, to this. He's, he just, he was on the news just saying that like, you know, this misinformation, they, they label everything misinformation to lead you to believe that it's so bad for you. They need to eradicate it. They need to eradicate somebody like me who's saying things like this because it's it's misinformation and it's hurtful. It's harmful. It's like, you're a grown person. You should be able to decide whether it's misinformation or not and if it's harmful. Now, I do believe that certain things that are, you know, against the law, certain uh, acts and certain, uh, you know, should not be televised and or put on the Internet. But that's a given. They even figured that out years ago. The problem is right now is it's screwing with their with their agenda and they want to keep you down and they're going to keep on pushing this. Let's see what Mark has to say here. Mark, do you listen to Dan Bongino? I do. I like Dan Bongino. He's been in the scene. He knows what goes on. And again, these are all people who just want to have a good life, a decent life for all, not just a chosen few. But I do listen to Dan Bongino. I like Dan. I don't know him, but I will one day. It's just the way it is. 818-259-7983. I'm, I told you, I, this is like this is like pulling teeth to get somebody. I, and again, we, we can talk about, you can talk about your personal life. I don't care. I just want to know what's going on around you. Where are you guys uh, uh, commenting from? 
Tell me, you know, where you're commenting from. I'd like to know where my audience is that's on the official pages with the ability to comment. Like Ben and uh, and Mark and, uh, you know, let's see, Tawanda told us where she was from. Thank you. But this is the thing. Uh, you know, I, I'm not... Uh, I know that many of you are thinking one way and not saying things out loud because you don't want to start problems. But you need to speak up. Now, I know they're all in South Florida. Ben says, you know, even Tucker. Well, look, there's people that I, I love Tucker Carlson, but I know people that think that can't stand him. Excuse me. Hold on. 818-259-7983. A phone call. What do you want to get off your chest? I'm going to I'm going to stick to this. I I I told myself, you know, I'm going to sit here and not say anything until the phone rings. But that, then it could be a total silent show. And for the people who listen on audio, uh, in the car and on the go, I didn't want to leave a, a bunch of dead silence. So I won't do it. Hmm. Hi, you're on with Life of Peter G. Who's this? And where are you calling from? Bernadine from Washington, Vancouver. Washington, Vancouver. What's on your mind? Yes. Thanks for calling. Uh, I'm calling because I agree with everything you say. You know, there's this is the land of the free. What a laugh. Yeah. What a laugh. Everything you have to pay tax in. From when you get your check, you go to the store, whatever. You're paying taxes. What I want to know is why do they give this money away when we need it ourselves? Well, you know, it, you know, you know why. Or if you don't, I'll tell you. But you know why. Um, okay. Do you notice that the border's been wide open? Do you agree with the way the border's been, or, or are you unaware of our your, of what's going on at our southern border? Oh, I'm aware. Okay. That, so, I don't agree with it being open like that. Okay. Well, for many people that live in the United States, they're not feeling the pain yet. So they have no clue. And I understand if it doesn't affect your neighborhood or your lifestyle, you kind of live your life because it's not bothering you. But when it does, and it's starting to infiltrate into the, you see what's going on with some of these cities now, with uh, Aurora, Colorado. There's, you know, and 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 in Springfield and things like that. So they're giving all that money to all these people coming over because they don't have any money, and they're coming over and getting a free ride. So there's where our money's going. And there, and the thing is, it's our taxpayer dollars, and they're printing money. Exactly. Okay. So what I'm saying also is. There's no guarantee that we're going to have money when we get old enough to get our Social Security and stuff. Why not if it's our money? And why shouldn't we vote if, where that money gets sent? Because it's our money, not the government's money. It's our money. Well, theoretically, we're supposed to be able to vote on who. See, the, our Congress and senators are, are merely supposed to be managers, you know, somebody to handle the business. But it's supposed to be us that vote on who we want to be the manager because we believe in, 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 you know, he hears what we're saying and has, and is supposedly supposed to take that to Congress to relay the message, what the people want. And that's not happening anymore. And that whole no. place needs to be cleaned out and wiped out. And, and, and there are some good people in there, but the, the, they, they line their own pockets. It's long forgotten. Oh yes. I agree with you there. They do. It's, they don't care about nobody else. Like up here in Washington, they have so many homeless people, you know, yeah. and they're sending money, giving money to other countries, It's sending money to other countries. They've been doing it for years. Washington's a mess because uh, you, you're in, uh, wh wh how close are you to like Seattle? Uh, about 200 miles. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, you know, Seattle's a freaking mess. It's a democratic city. They took, they took over that city. They just let them overrun the city for how many weeks before, you know, uh, Trump fi finally said, listen, if you don't get it under control, I'm sending in the national guard. But by then they mm -hmm. already destroyed the place. Right. It's a mess. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm not from here. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> well, okay. Well, and the reason I'm up here is because guess what? They help you more up here than they do over there. Really? Over there to get in standards is like trying to get money out of their pocket. You have to fill out all these applications. And then after you fill out all that application, they still deny you or, or they need all oh, this paper, that paper. Why not just tell you what you need up front? And they give you a hard time. They talk to you like crap. They treat you like crap. Even the Social Security office. Yeah, it's, it's overrun. 
They're, it's and, it's crazy. And they make it so difficult. I mean, there's been a lot of talk on how difficult it is to do things, to get things done in general. I mean, they mm -hmm. because all that red tape does nothing but create more money spending. It gets more money into the, the government system. And that's and, and again, it, it takes away from the people. We're pretty messed up. Right. It's gone. It's grown to yeah. a point that we're pretty messed up and it's very evident. But now flooding our nation with 20 million illegal immigrants and not mm -hmm. even and everybody used to think in the beginning, it was like, well, these are poor people wanting a better life. It's like not necessarily there's a percentage of them. But now all the jails and mental institutions are getting emptied out in, in 160 different countries and they're all making them come and they're here. All coming through there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But nobody understands that. I mean, some do, but nobody's going to under how many more murders are we going to have now? Rapes and, and thefts and, and all these issues going on before finally people start saying, this shit's got to stop. Right. Well, you got to vote. That is so ridiculous. You have to vote. I'm telling you. And the ones, and God bless my friends that I love very much that believe in the current administration and, and they're with her and, you know, that you have that right. This is America. But I'm, I'm sorry. I love you. But I beg to differ. We are going down a very bad road. Very oh, bad yeah. road. You need to vote. And then the groceries. Look at the groceries. All of the above. You know. Oh, my God. How can you afford to eat? I went to Walmart the other day, and I, I walked out with $80 in one little bag, and it was nothing. Uh-huh. That's correct. Yeah. And, and they don't bring the prices back down. Well. They done this when COVID started. Yeah. And they before that, it was because of the gas prices. The truckers didn't want to. Right. They were uh, uh, striking and stuff, so their prices went up. But they never went back down. Never. Well, gas never went down up until these past few weeks now because it's a you know it's getting close to the election. We knew that was going to happen. Happens all the time. Well, of course. But they always paint pretty pictures when they're going to be elected. Oh yeah! Right now we're in the mode of tell you anything you want to hear. Just get me in that office so I can tell you know turn around and do exactly the opposite. And and that's mm -hmm. what's, that's what's going to happen unless you wake up. I mean, last night you know it's just prime example. And again, I think they make a, a major point. And I would. Be on the Democratic side if, if you but nobody has yet to convince me to come on this show or anybody to give me reason to stay to, to go back to being a Democrat because I, I just can't do it. She and they, they, they nailed it on the head. They've had three and a half years. Why are we going to have to wait for her campaign promises for when she gets you know elected? She has every right and power to fix things. I would believe in her a lot if she just did it right now. Right. That's correct. But they don't. No. Like I said, they paint pretty pictures of what they're going to do, but they don't do it. Yeah, no, it, it's they a, don't. It's a mess, and we're we're going to be in deeper trouble here soon. And I, I'll tell you, even if Trump does get into office, I mean, that man won't sleep. And I again, they've 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 trained everybody. The media has conditioned everybody to believe he's a horrible human being. And I'm begging mm -hmm. to differ. I think he's changed even more over these past few years. And I truly believe that. He's going to not sleep to prove a point that he can turn this country around. I just believe it, whether you think so or not. Yeah. It's just my opinion. Yeah, but yeah. I, I I voted Democrat last time, and I that was the biggest mistake of my life. Well, look, a lot of people, a lot of people growing up. I grew up on the East Coast for, for my and my parents. You're, they're all Democrats because the Democrats were for the working people, and Repu right. Republicans were supposedly for the rich and this and for a long time they were. But mm -hmm. I, it's hard to get people to understand that this is not your parents' Democratic Party anymore. Things have changed, yeah. and the Republicans and there's plenty of Republicans I can't stand. They need to go too. They got to get out because mm -hmm. they're 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 just two faced traitors. But they're more democratic and more for the people now than the Democrats are. Things just changed, and I'm not right. going to stick with with the Titanic just because I belong to the Titanic. It's like screw you guys. You have yeah. lost your mind. So that's where I'm at. And I'm not telling you what to do or anybody else, but I'm just pointing out a few things. And there's a lot of my friends, again, that I love that I could show them blatantly fact in their face and they'll look at me and go, yeah, but still. So <laughs> you can't please everybody. No, you can't. And it, it's ridiculous that the people don't stand up and, you know, what can we do to make them understand the government, you know, that we're not going to put up with this shit no more. Exactly. Well, it is. But I also get a lot of emails from people that, that tell me that write me. They go, Peter, I am 100 percent behind you. I just can't 
get vocal like you do because I have a job or I have this and that. So I am praying that they are even though the United Auto Workers there, you know, I know that even though that the, the, their, their president isn't backing Trump, but I know the workers are. And I know that and I pray to God that all these silent people that they're going to vote, you know, with their with their uh, with their brain and not with their feelings, you know, looking for right. joy. They want joy in the White House. And, uh, and and a bunch of you know just just stories being told to them based on because yeah. they hate the orange man. I don't care if he's a little rough around the edges. You know, business is tough. Business is not an easy thing either. And he's dealing with world leaders that are not exactly nice people. You need somebody like exactly. that in there. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I, I hope they vote with Trump because this world is going to go down the drain. I hope well so bad. Again, I just hope that people use their heads and, and you know, some you're never going to reach. And that's OK. Again, this is America. You're entitled to do, you know, the freedom, what left we have. And if that's a choice you make, that's a choice you make. But I'm just trying to point out things in hopes to gain a few more because a lot of people are very unaware. They're just living their lives until it affects you. How long have you been up in Washington? Right. About two and a half years. Okay. Do you like it up there? Yes. Okay. You know, I don't know. You, yeah, like, it, it's it's very very nice the weather, you know, and, and the people are friendly. Okay. In San Antonio, they're not friendly. Really? <laughs> you look at somebody and they want to fight you. Really? Oh yes. Huh. No southern hospitality? And I'm there. Uh they do. Some do, but you know, these younger kids and stuff. Yeah. Uh people that think they're they're uh what they call pachucos. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you look at them and, and you're right. just looking that way. You're not even looking at them, right, and they right. like oh, yeah, you know, what, what you looking at? Cuss you out and yeah. everything. And yeah, well, that's one up, white shoes, this is where we're lacking with parenting again and upbringing. This is uh, we're you know we're gonna have a generation of stupidos uh, you know running this world if we don't get a grip on things. Yeah, but that again, I believe it's the government's fault. Well, you tell you why because they don't let you discipline your children no more. That too. you can spank them. They told me one time because they came to my house. My daughter complained because she wanted to be with her boyfriend that came out of prison, and she met him at a bus stop. Okay, and this guy taught her how to do so much wrong things. Right. Anyways, I try to get the police on her, and so she called CPS on me, and CPS said that I can spank her with my hand on her butt. And I cannot leave a mark. It can't turn pink or pur nothing. What the hell are they going to learn? No. I'm sorry. Sometimes they need a spanking. No, I, I understand that. And I, and I know in this day and age, like a lot of parents, number one, you're single parenting and you got and you're working or it's hard to keep a grip on your it's just times have just changed, you know, and it's time to that, you know, the current administration doesn't want to go back. They don't want to go back. They want to go forward and whatever that communistic uh, phrasing is, but whatever. But the thing is, we need to take a few things, you know, back to uh, some common sense on, on how we're raising, you know, our children. And you can't let them run to, to grow up to be wild animals because that's what you're going to get. Yeah. Well, they're not they're not disciplining their children because what happens when they discipline their children? Children are telling them, I'll call CPS on you. I, and they will. I get <laughs> it. I get it. Again, it's more bureaucracy. And uh, yeah, so they can disappear into the system and never be found again, just like the other 300,000 that are missing right now, too. Yeah. Yeah. They don't understand that. Well, okay. One last question for you. How did you find this show and how long you've been watching for? I was just watching it right now. I was looking at the phone and and I was scrolling up and I stopped. Oh, wow. Thank and you. I was looking at, at what you were saying, what they were other people were saying and nobody's calling and I'm, like, I'm gonna call yeah see that's the thing there's a difference between people who get off the couch and people who don't and uh and i thank you for calling in and uh just you know we're here all the time every wednesday plus you can see over 400 shows on demand you know on facebook's youtube's you name it youtube they're killing me over there with censorship but i still keep trying but again i thank you and please subscribe and share 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 okay all i right. will thank you sweetheart Thank you. All right. See you. A newbie had to call in, which I like that because normally the people who watch me all the time think, ah, you know, it's just Peter. A newbie. 818-259-7983. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to play since we're talking about what's going on. And then I want another phone call. All right. Hang on. This is going to be uh, uh, interesting, too. So we talked about the hurricanes. So let's talk about the debate last night. 
Let me get ready for this one. Woo! One more. I like new callers. I like new callers because they're curious and they need to be heard. And that's why I, I do that. But again, one day at a time. All right, so let's talk about the debate last night because I had to watch it. And I normally go for my walks about that time in the evening and except for Wednesdays. And uh, Wednesdays, I'm in the office. <laughs> I'm in the uh, square office. Not the Oval Office. And uh, I had to watch it and because I, I really thought that Walsh would step all over himself. He did a little bit better, but man, that face he had the whole day. Is a, it was just, it wasn't a smile, no, nothing. It was just a, he was thinking hard, man. That brain was just going and constantly jumping to tip to writing notes. And I'm going, he's a little bit rattled. He did better than I thought, but it's but but man, it, you know he he would just come in for the stepping all over himself. But again, I'm not saying, but the confidence just wasn't there, and I have no confidence in him anyway. I think that there's a lot of weird stuff behind him. That was the most normal I've seen him, because he just comes off to me very abnormal. But let's uh, this is this is you know I dug into a little bit about uh, Tampon Tim's background, but. This woman just, you know, he he lied a lot, and he claims he doesn't remember and this and that, but this is just a little bit of a warm up on him. Check this out. More lies from vice presidential candidate Tim Waltz. In 2006, he was running for Congress and he claimed at the time that he won a special award from the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce for his contributions to businesses. And the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce came out and was like, uh, yeah, hold up. No, you didn't. And stop lying. And this letter is gold. It was just unearthed again. It has come to my attention that as part of your campaign for U.S. Congress, you have posted your biography on your website that claims you received an award from the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce for your service to the business community. I have been president of the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce since 2000 and a professional staff person of the Nebraska COC for over 20 years. We researched this matter and can confirm that you have not been the recipient of any award from the Nebraska COC. I'm not going to draw conclusions about your intentions by including this line in your biography. However, we respectfully request that you remove any reference to our organization as it could be considered an endorsement of your candidacy. It should be pointed out, however, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce has endorsed your opponent, Congressman Gil Gutnick, for his support of small business issues. Sincerely, Barry L. Kennedy, President. How many lies can this guy get caught in? Stolen valor. He said his wife did IVF. Even the wife was like, no, I didn't. Uh, now now he's gotten an award from the uh, Chamber of Commerce that he never got. Then he was a head coach of the football team that won a national championship. And he was like some side coach uh, volunteer in reality. I mean, uh, it, 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 this is all black and white. And this is just what we know so far. Oh, and he puts tampons in boys' bathrooms because he's lying to children and telling them that they're born in the wrong body and messing with their minds, too. Yeah, lies, lies, lies. Interesting, huh? Yeah, it is interesting. I think it is because, again, yeah, we don't know a whole lot about this guy, but from if you start the, – the spiny senses just start going off. He just There's just a lot of weird going on. And I, I know that it'll all start coming out. The more we dig, the more, the more. That's why you haven't seen much of him. He got booed at the football. <laughs> we'll talk about that too. Oh, man, I'm telling you. But here, this is this is exactly. Now, here's how I know that, again, he's just not the right person. Besides, I already knew that because of his, uh, you know, he let his own cities and, you know, burn to the ground during George Floyd. It's just his ideas. Again, he's right in there with her. They're, they're, they're two peas in a pod, but he's, it's not right for this country if you want a decent country. But here's CNN, and they're, you know, they pretty much protect this current administration, and even they can't deny it. Uh, and here's a quick little uh, review from CNN about last night's debate. And to me, it's like when it gets down to the people who protect him that are no longer, you know, you just can't, 
Well, then you know you got a problem. Check it out. It's pretty clear uh, Vance outclassed Walls tonight. I mean, I was watching this, and all I could think of was, man, Walls is so in over his head. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine this guy sitting in the White House Situation Room with that facial expression that's like 50% sheer terror and 50% extreme bafflement? I mean, it was amazing, the split-screen difference between a competent Vance and a totally in over his head Walls. The answer on why he lied about his trips to China and the Tiananmen Square thing was probably the worst VP debate meltdown since Stockdale in 92. You know, who am I and why am I here? It was two and a half minutes of absolute terrible. For Vance, night of redemption, all the political media has told us that Vance was a terrible pick and Walls was gonna bring in all these voters. That charade is now over. Walls does not belong at this level of American politics. Vance does. Final verdict, Tim Walls wandered into the wrong bar tonight. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Again, Vance is, he's not an idiot. The guy, you know, he's a younger guy and he's got his act together. They painted him, again, believing the media. They paint him as a bad guy and he does all this weird stuff. But they've got nothing. It's just accusations. And But unfortunately, a lot of people buy into it because you want to believe because he's up with the orange man. You know, six years ago, he didn't like the orange man. Because he fell into that whole thing, too. But then he got to know and saw what was actually going on, and he changed his tune. And they asked him that during the debate. They said, you, too, were against President Trump. And how come all of a sudden now you're with him? And he honestly said, he said, he wasn't the man I thought he was. And he meant that in a good way. Uh, he wasn't the man he was painted. I was, you know, uh, led to believe he was. They lead you to believe. They want to. They make him out as such a horrible human being. Business is tough. You got to do it. You know, you're not going to please everybody. Just like this show, you're not. Even friends. I got close friends that now they probably don't. You know, some of them are like, "I oh, screw Peter." And I don't, I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. I mean, I love them, and if they want to talk to me, great. I don't hold this. This is a show. This is not meant for them only and only them. I do have close friends. In fact. Some I'd hardly talk to because I don't want to open up that can of worms because I just assume let it go. We had way too many good memories and, and years and history than for them to be all upset about what I'm doing right now because it doesn't fall in with their narrative. But that's okay. But anyway, they painted a real bad picture of him and the guy just came off. He didn't take a single note. He didn't have to. You asked him a question, he answered it as opposed to the other side who gets goes around, skates around any which way they can. Let's try now for our next two minutes. 818-259-7983. You get another shot to put in a phone call. I'll give you two minutes. I don't get a phone call in two minutes. I'm moving on. 818-259-7983. It's just the way it is. But uh, in the meantime, let's have something fun and energetic. Eight one eight two five nine seven nine eight three. We spare no expense here at the Peter G Show. Eight one eight two five nine seven nine eight three. Correct. Thirty seconds, and I'll move on to the next stuff. I like hearing from people, though, especially the newbies. Eight one eight. You must have. I mean, even in your personal life. I started out talking about things that drove me crazy in my personal life. That's how we did it. That's what started this whole show. My divorce about, you know, it about destroyed me. I had to change everything to accommodate things. And that's not easy. Yeah, look, I don't know. Beverly, are you advertising for me? Let me see what we got here. She says it the same thing. 818-259-7983. Uh, we'll see what happens, but... Uh... Hey, you're on Life, Peter G. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, I'm calling from Pensacola. You know who this is. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know you. Who are you? Hey, Steve, man. How are you? Steve. Steve. Mm, yeah. Steve. Steve. Sounds familiar, but it doesn't ring a bell. I have to see the face. What's going on? Uh -huh. What's going on? Uh, nothing much, man. I, I just uh, 
wanted to call and chat a little bit about, uh, yeah, the, the current situation, the Trump derangement syndrome is is amazing. And there's no way, there's no way that you can uh, logically talk to anybody that's got it. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking in a way because it's, I know it's happening with some of our closest friends, you know, yes. and, and what do you do? You know, it's, it's, you just, you either don't talk about it when you're around them, knowing that they know what you're thinking and you know what they're thinking, or you get into these heated arguments or they go, well, then don't talk to me anymore, which I don't want that to happen. No, no. I, I'm, and I'm, I'm that way with a few of my friends. I had one the other day that, uh, I mean, and it, their, their derangement has gotten so bad and, and they're beginning to realize that I think, because I actually had one of these people, one of my friends tell me uh, that he wasn't going to vote for him. And the, uh, at, I mean, that because he's selling wristwatches now. Oh, like instead of Bibles and stuff. Yeah. And, and I said, what do you mean he's selling? Yeah. yeah. And, and he just was on Facebook and I went, well, uh, who's sponsoring it? Is is it does it say uh, on sale uh, now by Donald Trump? I said, no, you know, it's it's like I, all the merchandise that's out there does not go into his pocket. All the all the money doesn't go into his pocket. So is it, so he's basing how the United States should exist based on that. Is that his total belief system? Uh, well. No, I mean he's uh, he he's kind of he uh, he's against all authority, kind of. I, every everybody's wrong except him. Well, he's uh, not, yeah, but he's not running for president. No, he's not. But I mean, there is just no way he's everything about Trump is negative. It, it, nothing can you can't say anything uh, to him positive about Trump that he's not going to come back with something, and it's usually something kind of in name. Okay, but but what then? Then does he at least try to explain to you why? I mean, he it, so then he's for Harris. Is that what he's saying? Uh, no, he won't. He won't. Um, he won't step up to that. He he, he won't uh, acknowledge that. All, all he says is Trump is bad, and we just can't have Trump. Well, well, that's the problem I have, though. Even but now you're telling me he's not for her either, or if he is, he's not saying it. I would think if he's saying that much negativity, he'd be that much more prouder on why he's stepping up for Harris. But my biggest issue is, okay, you want me to believe that I need to change my way of thinking, but yet you can't tell me why. That's my only issue. Yeah, yeah. He, besides, he's a liar, but you have no detail. Yeah, you yeah, and I've asked that. It's like he's a liar. What did he lie about? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and they're, ne they're never going to tell you. Well, you see a million videos that they go when people say uh, Harris, and they go, "What's your favorite policy about her?" And they go, "Uh, oh, we don't <laughs> we don't really know, but we just know that you know she's she's just going you know." I, there, there's the, the, the ignorance again, because they've fallen into the, and, and you can't blame them though. I mean, they sold it very well to a lot of people. Yeah. 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 You know, but, but the thing is, you know, so all you can do, and if I find if you attack these people, it's not doing any good. You're just making things worse, but you know, you try to have a decent conversation and let them talk and tell you why. And when they can't tell you why, maybe show them a few, you know, reasons on why that you should, possibly consider what you know you're saying but it's a tough one i'm sitting up oh, here yeah. i get i get called all kinds of names weekly i mean you know <laughs> and, and and what usually happens well it, what usually happens is one or the other of us and i i'm guilty i mean i try not to i try to be rational and logical and and try to have a conversation mm -hmm. but one or the other of us is, is it's going to escalate into anger yeah, yeah. and and so that's one of the reasons I stay away from it because I don't want to escalate into anger. Yeah. It's sad. I mean, they've done a great job at dividing us. They have done the best job at the, because that's what they really need to be able to break down this country is no unity. And unity is the key. And yet, you know, united we stand, divided we fall. And it's a very true statement. Yep. So, yep. so, so they're doing very well, you know. And before you know it, we'll have George Soros and all those assholes, you know, telling us what to do, what you know, what we can and cannot do if they have it their way. Four more years of this. If we let old Tampon Tim, I, I, uh, I don't, you probably can't see it. Where the hell am I? But I forgot. 
that just recently, this past week, did you see that uh, Tim Walz met with Alex Soros, the son of George Soros? Yes, yes. In in New York. And he was praising on him. He was honored to be able to go talk to Alex Soros. What he was doing, he was, you know, oh, I don't want to get crude. He was, you know, he was just getting ready. That, that's it. It's like he's he's finding out what his next mission is. <laughs> well, you know, well, not, now, not to change the subject, but I mean, but let's stay on Soros for a minute. Uh, have you seen the, uh, uh, the the things that are coming out about the FCC trying to fast track Soros and uh, over 200 radio stations? Yeah, I've seen that. I mean, yeah, he's going to he's got that kind of money. He floods the market, you know, and just keeps on, you know, brainwashing. If you beat, you know, enough commercials into people's heads, uh, you know, it's but it, it says it all right now. While you're on the phone, I'm showing pictures of Tim Walsh and Alex Soros together in New York. You know, he was going there. It's like, what kind? Why would you want to have association with those people? <laughs> yeah. You know, what does that te- what does that tell for you the money. for the money and for the power? Well, that's telling you right there. It's like you are picking the wrong people. They are going to lead us into exactly what they've been working towards. And that's that, you know, one new world, you know, one world, you name it. Yeah. I mean, the coll- and the collapse, the collapse of this country, uh, just like the collapse of Venezuela and every. Where else Soros has been involved? Exactly. Everybody thinks like, no, this couldn't possibly happen to the United States. It could happen to the United States as, as easily. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. But yeah. again, I'm showing a picture of them two together. And if that doesn't tell you what's what, you know, what team they're on, I don't know what else can. They're not just doing it for fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, man, I, I won't take up any more of your time. Uh, I right. love you, dude. Always have. Well, thank you. I love you too. And thanks for calling in. I'm going to play a few more videos and uh, stir the pot a little bit more, I guess. So, good, good for you. Good for good. you. Well, thanks for watching. And again, share, share, share. I need all the help I can get because they are killing me on some of these platforms. They just don't want me running my mouth. And I, you know, <laughs> onward through the fog. Yeah, onward. Yes. All right, all right brother. Take care. Bye. Yep. Yep. I'm telling you, people, if those pictures I just showed you don't tell all, I don't know what else will. Why would you? It's just, like you know, association by guilt. I mean, and this is just recently. He purposely went there to meet with him. This wasn't at a party, you know, because I talked about that last week where Diddy's hanging out and Trump is, you know, there's pictures of Trump and S, uh, Epstein, you know, because they were all in that that level and they've gone to do the same functions together. Everybody takes pictures you know, but I had this one guy who was saying how, you know, Trump was on Epstein's plane a, a gazillion times. And I mean, the biggest bunch of bullshit. It never happened. He's on camera. He, he said, is, you know, saying it never happened and it never happened. But you believe what they tell you. You believe what you want to believe. Let's talk about price gouging, because that was a big thing this past week. People are concerned about this stuff, the cost of living. But here's a little lesson on price gouging and, uh, and how it works. But check this out. Let's talk about price gouging and who's really doing it. You know, they're talking about raising corporate income tax from 21 to 28 percent. That's a 33 percent increase. Do you think companies are just going to eat that or do you think they're going to pass that cost along to you, the consumer? And then when goods and services cost more and you go to buy them, a higher price means higher sales tax. And who pays the sales tax? You do. And if you need a raise at work so that you can afford to live, you get more money, then you pay more what? You pay more income tax. The government gets your income tax, they get your sales tax, you have to pay the higher prices. Who's really doing the price gouging here? Who's making the money? You gotta stop listening to the TV and think through the process. The only people that stand to benefit from this is the government in more taxes. That's the way it works. That is the way it works. Taxes, taxes, taxes. They're taxing. That's why, again, the orange man is threatening to to change a lot of this. And I'm going to believe him because he's got a lot at stake here. He wants to go down in history as making the biggest change for the benefit of this country ever. And I believe him because he's that kind of a guy who... You know, he doesn't sleep at night because he, he, yeah, sure. Does he stroke himself? And, you know, uh, yeah, absolutely. But I don't care. Make it better. He knows how to get the job done. He proved that. There was an ice skating rink in New York City that the city couldn't get built. How many years? It was like two and a half years or something like that, and it still wasn't built. 
somehow or another, he got involved and got it built in, in months. In months. It's it's the bureaucracy. The, the, the lady that called a little bit about the bureau, the red tape and bureaucracy has gotten out of control. You got to strip it down and, and start over with some good people behind the wheel. The problem is we don't have good people managing our country, which is your money. So they're spending it. They just spend it to cover over the problems. Just keep throwing money at it and the problems never get fixed. And we just keep paying taxes more. We need more. We need more. We need more. We have to raise taxes, raise taxes. Then they tell you they're not going to raise taxes for certain people under $400,000. It's the farthest from the truth. It's going to all trickle down. It will. Common sense. Stop buying into the bullshit. We need to eliminate. They don't want to, the government doesn't want to have government being eliminated. It's going to cost them their jobs. So it's cushy ass jobs. Here, here's the cost of living. This is the difference between the orange man and, uh, and, and Kamala. Uh, again, de definitive answers as opposed to just pussyfooting around and running in circles. How are you going to bring down the cost of food and groceries? We really would love to know what your plan is to help lower the cost of living. So we have to start always with energy, always. I don't want to be boring about it, but there's no bigger subject. It covers everything. If you make donuts, if you make cars, whatever you make, energy is a big deal. Yeah. I, first of all, thank you both for being here. And yours is a, a story I hear around the country as I travel. And um, in terms of both rightly having the right to have aspirations and dreams. Uh, it's my ambition to get your energy bill within 12 months down 50%. If I can do that, you've done a hell of a job. 5-0, five, oh, five, not 15, 50. And ambitions for your family and working hard and finding that the American dream is for this generation and so many recently far more elusive than it's been. But we're going to get interest rates down and we got to work with our farmers. Our farmers are being decimated right now. They're being absolutely, absolutely decimated. We're going to let our farmers go to work. Look, I grew up a child of, of a mother who worked very hard. She raised me and my sister and she saved up and. And I don't want to hear no more. I don't want to hear no more nothing. Never answers with an answer. She's concerned about everybody having the right to have dreams and ambitions. And last time I looked, anybody can have dreams and ambitions. Nobody has ever stopped anybody. They can't stop you from having inner thoughts. But then you got Trump saying in a year, which I don't know how the hell he can do it. But I do, I do, but I don't. I mean, he's got so many other things to do. But he'll do it because he's that kind of a, his brain is wired that way. He says, in a year, I hope to, I, I, I will have energy costs down 50%, not 15%, 50%. I'm going, number one, I believe him because he's making a very bold statement, but he knows he's going to be held liable for that because they're getting, they watch him like a hawk. They let all everybody else off the hook, but they watch him like a hawk. So I know he's going to do it. Who wouldn't want to have an electricity bill that's half of the uh, outrageous bills that you're paying now? I know he'll do it. It's not like he can just sign a pen and say, hey, electric company, you got to drop your bills. He has to create a way to make the energy go down. So that way they can justify bringing the bill down. You can't just tell a company like Biden wants to do, telling, he says, yeah, we're going to have free child care. What are you going to tell these child care places that they have to just eat it? They got to drop their rates. They, then they can't pay their bills. So then they'll no longer be in business. It's all bullshit. And you buy into it because you hate the orange man. They've, they've, again, they've conditioned you. They've pounded it into you to make them, you know, they throw all these Trump, trumped up, <laughs> I hate saying trumped up, all these bogus charges, running them through courts. None of this stuff stuck. It's, they just, they, they thought they could wear them out. But that man is a tank. Never say die. And they even tried to kill him. And they're still, and I promise you, even if he gets in office, they will still try and kill him because he's blowing the whole world, new world order and all the BlackRock people's game out of the water.
he's going to it's going to diminish them for the next 50 years so they could try to rebuild and do it all over again to another several generations flat out truth people flat out truth you don't think so go look a little deeper don't listen to me i'm just getting your thoughts energized hey it was uh Anybody uh, watch uh, college football? I'm not much of a college football fan, but it's times like this where I, I can't help but pay attention. The Alabama-Georgia uh, game uh, was a, apparently that's a big rivalry, a big game down south, and Trump decided to uh, go to that game. And it's just, I mean, you just know, regardless of what the, the advertisements say and everything, there's people, the difference in people's responses to him versus them, it's just, it's, it's, it's unmeasurable. It's off the charts. Check it out. But it's two very, very different scenes from college football this weekend. Take Exhibit A. You have Donald Trump making his way into Brian Denny Stadium. <laughs> Exhibit B, visitor at the big house, was Tim Walls. He could literally only dream of getting a Trump-like reception. these images, I think, make it very clear what the younger kids are thinking about. Listen, I know there's going to be a difference if you go to the NYU's campus. I'm sure people there would be super thrilled to see Tim Walls, those that are being let early out of their gender studies class. But I think that the people who realize what's going on in this country, and it's not just about, oh, we want to elect a black woman as our president. Those that are actually paying attention to the real issues we have, the border, the economy, crime. I think those people are definitely on board with Trump. And I think the crowds, the reaction of these crowds tell us all we need to know. That's right. Can't please everybody, but I'm telling you, everywhere he goes, people get excited to see him because the reality is the media lies. They don't want you to know just how popular, how much people are thirsting for change in this country to get going again. Because these last three and a half years, they watched everything plummet. Forget about the pandemic and everything. The whole world crashed. I'm so sick of people talking about they start their chart right at the point where everything plummeted and you can't that was nobody he couldn't have stopped that from coming he didn't you know nobody knew what that this plan that they had to to you know stifle the whole world but he did do better it's that simple and he's going to do better again but look new york new york is a blue true blue city st- Mostly, you know, and, and here's him in New York at, at one of his rallies. And there was people, they couldn't fit the people. There was there was 60,000 people outside watching on jumbotrons. But it's two very, very... Whoops, same one. <laughs> Whoopsie. Here we go. hasn't been done in many decades. It hasn't been done for a long time, but we are going to win New York. Republican can honestly say it, and we're going to do it. We have to do it. 
and he doesn't have to pay people to come see him. They actually pay to come see him. And that's a fact. But again, you know, I, I wish, you know, I opened up the phone lines again. You know, we had a few calls. Thank you for, for calling. And then even I got now, this is what I normally get, but that's cool. Again, baby steps. Jonathan just said, you know, I will call at another time. Good stream. Thank you, Jonathan. Next week, I'm going to have the phone lines open all month. It's five shows this month. There's five Wednesdays in October. So you'll get your chance if you mean it. And I want to hear from you. But I, I, I've I, yet to ever get somebody who's sticking up for the whole Harris or Biden at the time. You know, nobody calls to stick up for them. They call me. I'll, I'll listen. I'm thinking maybe, you, you know, there's something I don't know that maybe you'll change my mind so I could go, wow, I was wrong. But they won't. You won't because nobody, nobody's got anything, a leg to stand on. I don't, and I'm not going to disagree. You can call. And even if I still don't believe you, cause I, I think you, you're pulling things out your ass. I, I'll, I'll still not going to not like you. I, I appreciate you calling. You know, it's, that's debate. That's, you know, mixing up, moving around ideas, what this country was built on, but we've so forgotten. It's they, they've, they've, changed everything they are just stripping us away from everything they're stripping you away of your ability of to think for yourself they're telling you what's good for you and you just go oh, okay there's a lot most stuff and that foods i want to do a show just on food oh my god you know the, you go to walmart because you you know you walmart's affordable and things like that and they're great value and you look at the, the ingredients on things and there's a lot of stuff that is not good for you it's a cheaper way for them to make it, but but you buy it because you have to. And you feed it to your kids. I mean, eating clean and eating good. I just talked to a celebrity psychic, Tony Green, today. And uh, she was telling me about, you know, that she buys, a, a, like, beef from, like, a butcher. You know, you, you, you spend, you get, you know, a, a big piece, and they cut it and make it because she needs, she, for some reason, she's got some kind of, she can't have beef with antibiotics injected in them and stuff like that. She gets an allergic reaction. And I'm going, that's all fine and dandy, but uh, most people can't afford to do that. You know, you're looking to try and put food in your family's stomachs and on a budget, uh, you know, let alone eat steak. Used to be up until these past two years now. Anyway, that's where we're at. But, uh, you know, again, we're dealing with with a lot of idiocracy and you're buying into it. And I'm sorry, folks, but I'm here to maybe not piss you off, but make you think that maybe I've got something there. Maybe there's just something. OK, my name is Peter G. I want to thank you for watching the show. We got a couple of callers all month. I'm going to keep the phone lines open. So it's going to be what do you think Wednesday and that's all I need is two, three, four calls. I mean, you know, we can make a whole show someday of just nothing but calls. I'll be like Larry King, you know. Jennifer from Chicago, you're on. But uh, I appreciate you watching. I do. I Please, please, please. Again, I can't tell you how important it is for you to share. Share the show. They are throttling me back. They're making it hard for me to be seen. Just because you're seeing it doesn't mean that other people can see. I don't know how the hell it works. It's, it's be over my pay grade, but they 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 just hold me back because I'm not talking about puppies and kitties. You know, they don't want this stuff out. So help me out. Subscribe, follow, share on the multiple platforms. We're on 11 different video platforms, 26 different audio. Remember, if you can't watch the show, I love if you dedicate yourself and spend the time to sit and watch the Peter G Show. I do, I do, I do. But if you can't, put an earbud in your ear, Google Peter G Show Podcast, listen to the audio version. There's They're on all the majors, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, uh, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, you name it. We're there. Easy to find. Over 400 shows on demand. I love that you guys watch live, but you can watch these shows anytime on demand with the push of a button. Okay? I appreciate you. I do. Uh, we'll see you next week. I want to remind you again, we are getting in some weird times and things this month could get really even stranger. Stay vigilant. Keep your eyes and ears open. Don't believe everything you hear, even me. Question it. Research it. Like I do. I try to. And uh, and make it, try to make somewhat of an educated decision. 
our country depends on. And uh, that's it. I'll see you next week. Like Clockwork, every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. on the East Coast. Right here, Life of Peter G., The Peter G. Show. And uh, be kind, okay? Be kind because life is a bitch. They're pushing our buttons. They really are. You don't have to be an ass. Still look at people and smile. But you don't have to take a bunch of shit from people either because some people, there's definitely people out here trying to take advantage of everybody, let alone the crime and everything. Please, please be safe. All right? I'll see you next week. My, next week. Sounded. Sorry, getting some Southern there. See you next week. My name is Peter G. As always, I love you guys. And peace out. Peter G. Show. Peter G. Show. Divorce dad. Single dad.